Oh, sorry, the only Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, the House is coming uh, to the end of this session and will rise uh, this evening for the uh, Christmas break. And as is traditional in this place at this moment, we pause um, uh, to engage in uh, what are called the valedictories. They are sometimes uh, uh, given a less reverent title uh, outside of this place, but it is an occasion uh, to uh, look back on the year. It's an opportunity for me and I know an opportunity for the Leader of the Opposition uh, to express our gratitude to those people who have made uh, such a contribution to the working of this parliament and made uh, our political and public lives possible. And uh, I, I wish a Merry Christmas to the Leader of the Opposition. I uh, Mr Speaker, as we approach the Christmas season, uh, there are often debates about um, uh, Christmas being a Christian festival or whether it's uh, a non-Christian festival in various parts of the world. I think um, the truth is this. Whether we are of faith or not of faith, this is an important season for us all. For those of us who are of faith, it celebrates the birth of the Christ child. For those beyond faith, it is a celebration for all families. Um, and all, therefore, enjoy this season which lies ahead. Mr Speaker, all the best for Christmas to all members of this parliament and for all those who serve the members of parliament so represented. Yeah. Time Minister on indulgence. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And as the Parliament draws to a close, I did want to make some uh, reflections, some Christmas valedictories. I know it always strikes us as a little bit strange uh, that at the end of a parliamentary session in November we do Christmas valedictories, and I don't want it to give the impression to anyone that we are leaving this place and going on holidays. It always frustrates us when members of the public think that. Uh, people will be returning to their electorates for a full round of work, including those very special end-of-year school events that we all look forward to. Uh, I would like to uh, very specifically say to the Labor team, as the year comes to an end, uh, I picked this up from Ed Husick, the member uh, for Greenway, when he did his uh, first Chifley. I am tired. The member for Chifley, uh, when he did his maiden speech in this parliament, he said something that always struck me, and so I'm going to use these words in conclusion to my Labor colleagues. He said a saying from his original language and then translated into English, from my heart to yours, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. This centenary, I'm reminded of the work of Charles Bean, the mm. official historian of the Great War. He was witness. Uh, uh, to the most bloody and brutal conflict in human history. Uh, yet the worst of times uh, can sometimes bring out the best in people. Uh, we're all aware of the famous story of the British and the German soldiers uh, fraternising uh, in no man's land on Christmas Day 1914, uh, playing soccer and singing Christmas carols together. On Christmas Eve 1916, Charles Bean wrote these words, which unite believer and unbeliever, Christian and non-Christian. He wrote, I am not a religious man, but this day represents the birth of a very precious ideal into the world. The observance of it is a sign of our attachment to the highest ideals yet imp imported on earth. So, Madam Speaker, um, this is a significant time. Uh, it's a significant celebration. Uh, may it be this year, as all years, uh, a time to reflect, uh, a time to be with family and loved ones and a time to rededicate ourselves to our highest ideals. And to the Australian people who we represent here and who are uppermost in the minds of all we do, I wish you a very happy Christmas, safe and family-filled holidays and a 2017 filled with peace and love. Love for our families and friends and, above all, for those who are lonely, isolated, those who are brought low by poverty or illness. Whether we are of any or no faith, this is the Christmas season, and the message Jesus brought was one of unconditional love. And we will be at our very best when we reach out without judging, as the member for Sydney and I have often done at Graham Long's Wayside Chapel, to those who most need, especially at this time, our love and our generosity. Thank you, Prime Minister. I call the Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Well, this time last year, this time this year, a lot's happened. Of course, we had the general election and the people of Australia had their opportunity 
to make the most important decision they make every three years in terms of who comes into this place and represents them and forms a government. And once again this year, uh, they exercise their judgment. And all of us who have been returned to this place will come back <coughs> with a great sense of uh, humility and in, in, in gratefulness to the opportunity we have to serve in this place, first and foremost as a member for our electorates. Uh, whether in my own in southern Sydney and <coughs> the electorate of Cook, <coughs> taking in the, the southern parts of St George and the Sutherland Shire <coughs> or elsewhere around this country. Our first opportunity, our first privilege, our first duty <coughs> is to all of those in our electorates. And we say a very grateful thanks uh, to, to all of them for returning us to this place, um, to represent them and to do our very, very best. And so, Mr Speaker, since that general election, the government has been hard at work, as I've mentioned in various responses and statements in this place and in others. And I don't intend to go over those matters because this afternoon is about something very different. So, with all of those uh, well wishes, uh, Mr. Speaker, of course it has been a, an ad adventurous year. It has been a dramatic year. It has been a year of a general election. It has been a year of achievements. It's been a year of disappointments for some, Mr. Speaker. But it is a year in which the great Australian spirit has showcased itself again to itself and to the world. This really is the greatest country in the world in which to live. And, and whatever difficulties before us or whatever challenges are in front of us, the one thing we can always say with a full heart is it's great to be an Australian. Merry Christmas, everyone.